السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. تفضلوا. Uh, let me share the screen, please, brother. Uh, is this uh, visible, my screen? Evet, şu anda görüntü var. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so you are able to see the screen. My presentation is visible here on screen. Yes, we can see your presentation, sir. Uh, Brother Ali, my uh, presentation is visible on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Dr. Ajaz. Oh, okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So let me start. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for this uh, good uh, opportunity to present my this paper. So I will try to conclude in 15 minutes, inshallah. Uh, so the topic today uh, is the Islamic economic governance and justice, uh, joint justice system, challenge, challenges and opportunity for the Islamic Union. So in this. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I will cover the, the outline will be, uh, the first part will be the principles of Islamic economic governance, uh, which includes the social responsibility, Sharia compliance finance, and ethical business practices, because for such a topic, it is very important to let us know first the basic ethics of the financial and uh, economic and governance structure in Islamic Union. So later on, uh, the second session will be overview of the joint justice system. Third will be overview of the Islamic governance and legal framework. Then challenges and opportunities. And uh, this will be the final. And after that, we will come towards the economical stability and resilience, how the Islamic economic system and joint justice system will take us to that uh, point. First of all, let, let me give the brief uh, about this joint Islamic joint uh, judicial system or governance system, what it is and what it looks like little bit for four points. The Islamic Union, which represents a collective efforts of Muslim nations, which will promote the unity, cooperation and share values together. As its member, they will be together to facilitate uh, each other for the justice, fairness, and economic transactions, which will be on that principle. All the economic transactions uh, will be on the justice, fairness, and economic uh, and fairness. So, in this uh, system, Islamic economic governance uh, deeply roots in the principle of teachings of Islam, emphasizes just fairness and ethical conducted in Islamic economic activities. This system is not merely an economic model. However, we see that it comprises all the way of life, which is social, political, and economical aspects. The economic union seeks to unite the Muslim world. So the, economic, the Islamic union, which we are talking today, in the real sense, it doesn't exist till now, but a lot of things has been done from previously. It has been tried to get in the play but till now it is still in the development so what this union uh, like to do by the unity of unity of the muslim world they like it to be under a single economic political and social system uh, from the, the first time it came into the mind of the people it is from the uh, since the fall of uthman khilafat in earlier 20th century because at that point of time the bifurcation of Islamic Union was done into the states. So later on, they find that this we have to be united in some way, if not in this way, but in any other way. So they tried the concept of union, Islamic Union. The implications of such a union presents numerous challenges also. So the implementation of such union challenges us also some uh, where we have to bear some challenges as well as there are huge opportunities which we will discuss now uh, step by step. 
So first of all, as I said, that we need to know about the principles first, that what is in the system, how we can uh, go beyond this. So first, we have the social responsibilities in Islamic economic governance. We must have the social responsibilities, which, incl which includes prohibition of riba, which is strictly prohibited in Islam. And it is mentioned in Quran also that this is an exploitation and injustice if we will include in interest, if we will deal in interest. As uh, explicitly uh, said in the Quran that, uh, that there is a prohibition of uh, this um, interest, uh, it is in Surah Al-Baqarah 227, two, Surah Al-Baqarah 275 to 279 ayah number. And Al Imran 3, uh, Al Imran 130, 130. Ah, yeah. So there are many in many verses, but these two are which I like to highlight. Similarly, if you will go to prohibition of Garar and Miser, which is the uncertainty and gambling, this is also mentioned in Quran. However, about the Garar, it is not directly mentioned in Quran, but in Hadith, it is also existing. Whereas the Maisar is also uh, is mentioned in both Quran and Hadith. So this uncertainty and gambling, uh, this is also prohibited because these, these, these are based on the principles of fairness, transference and avoidance of the exploitation, their prohibition. So in these two ways, there is also the exploitation and which we call cheating. Charity in the way of zakat. So this is one more responsibility in the society. Zakat is a compulsory which we have to give as 2.5% of our property and 10% on our production, uh, agriculture production, of course. And waqf and infaq, which is the optional, but zakat is the main, uh, which is compulsory for every to every Muslim. So this is the one uh, we can say that zakat, it is the main tool for the uh, distribution of wealth. So this tool which we are utilizing in our society will be, uh, will uh, do an equality in the society. And fourth point is promotion and protection of pro private property. So if you will see that uh, this is the concept that where we, we, which we got from the Quran directly, as the as we all know that wealth belongs to Allah, everything on this world or in any where in the universe belongs to Allah. So it is uh, it is in Quran mentioned that uh, the principle uh, which we talk about this promotion of private property. There is an ayah in Quran they, that is saying to Allah belongs whatever is in the heaven and whatever is on the earth. So the principle of, uh, we can say the ownership of everything is in Allah, but uh, surely I am about to place a uh, vice version on earth. So we are just as a Khalifa on this earth to utilize these things which we have here or which we are given as a, uh, as a protector from our Allah. So we have to utilize it in a given way, in that way that we can give it back to the society as we had been expected to work on it. And fourth one, fifth one is ethical and moral values, which includes tawheed, taqwa, justice and fairness, honesty and trust, trustfulness, compassion and kindness, uh, respect, tolerance, humility, etc. These are the self-explanatory words. We don't need uh, more explanation. And social justice, which we talk about equality, wealth distribution, which I talk in zakat as well as distribution, elimination of exploitation, accountability and transparency. This is also in a so society. We need to uphold these ethics, uh, human rights, social welfare, etc. So let us go to the second point sharia compliance finance so the one more point in this is that sharia compliance finance which will be a point a part of uh, islamic governance or justice system because this includes injustice also financial justice 
So first is prohibition of riba, which we talk already about, garar, we talk already about, because this is the part which comes in different uh, segments of the society or of the uh, financial as well as social as well as other parts of the life. So prohibition of haram activities, these are the activities which are prohibited in Islam, such as, as we talk, interest or uh, investments in uh, haram products, alcohol, gambling, or pork, extra, whichever is prohibited in Quran or Hadith. So we, uh, we are prohibited for these activities in Sharia compliance finance. So if you will finance or invest, we are not allowed to inv invest these things. Promotion of social and uh, ethical ethic, promotion of ethical and social responsibility in investment. So these investments which we have to promote are the uh, those uh, which uh, those investments which we need to transfer towards the responsible uh, social and ethical responsibility. Such as as we talk about, we have to give sadaka, we have to give charity, we have to. Uh, invest in that things which will be uh, useful for the society such as education, healthcare, uh, transportation, these things which we have, uh, we have utilization in our society for the good. So we can give these things in the, we can invest in these things which are good for society. Third is risk sharing. If we will see the Islamic finance is based on risk and profit sharing. The risk sharing is basically attached to the ownership. So till we don't have ownership, we cannot share a risk. Uh, similarly, we have the contracts in this real sector, such as Mudaraba, Musharaka, Murabaha, and these are being developed through Islamic finance and Islamic economics. So financial real sector, financing real sector, we cannot finance to non-real sectors such as, which we say as, uh, uh, financing which is not a real in real sense any product or any which is for example gambling is also not a real sector or we can say that uh, financing in such certificates which are just in here financialization which we say uh, of debt so these financing or these investments we cannot finance in that so the third end uh, is business ethics, which we are responsible for these in our business dealings. Principle of just, we must be just, we must be justful in the principle as it is stated in Quran, O you who believe, stand out firmly for just as witness to Allah, even as against yourself, or your parents, or your kings, and whatever it has against, rich or poor. For Allah can best protect both. So wherever there is just, we have to stand for it. So in business ethics, we have in the same thing. Principle of honesty and truthfulness. So in business dealing, we, it is 100% sure we need to be honest and truthfulness. We cannot deceive them. Uh, as we know, it is a common term. Mutual concerns. We have to be any dealing with mutual consult, concerns. We cannot have one side uh, decision in these. Avoidance of riba is same as oh, mentioned above. Risk sharing, as mentioned above, we have to share risk in every business dealing, and mostly the risk is shared by ownership. Till you will not have ownership, uh, you cannot share the risk. So wherever you will see the contracts, many contracts, till you will not own an est, you cannot have any dealing, business dealing on it. And second is prohibition of garar uncertainty, which is also the same as mentioned above. So these were the three principles for the society which we have to incur in the society to be to be a viable society for this joint system. So now if we will go to overview of the joint justice system, and there are legal frameworks as uh, in this legal framework, a well-crafted legal framework uh, governs the justice system, guided justice, uh, judiciary, jurisdiction, and ensures principled administration through consistent constitutional provinces, states, regulates, and international agenda agreements. So these are the, the legal frameworks which it must include uh, judicial institutions as the core of the joint justice system. Specialized institutions have to be uh, 
created, which includes the courts, tribunals, uh, meticulous just uh, system, which will meticulously judge the disputes and uphold the legal processes for this uh, whole joint system. Juris jurisdiction is the third one. Uh, the joint justice system precise uh, uh, jurisdiction description covers civil, criminal, administrative, and specialized legal dominance, uh, deeply addressed diverse complexity because there will be complex things because of the many countries together, many nations together, different political uh, uh, views. So this will be complex. We have to streamline, streamline it. Uh, applicable laws. So in the joint system, we have to see any commonly applicable laws which will be applicable to all these nations, and this will be accepted by their economical uh, 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 this judicial systems. So we have to carve like such a uh, legal system in this. Dispute resolution system. So we have to create a dispute resolution system also in this, which will be uh, the mechanism including litigations, arbitration, mediation, and alternative methods for this, which focus on accessibility, fairness, and efficiency. These re resolutions prompting ex uh, expedition outcome that are inherited uh, just. So we need to take care of this also if we are going to think about a joint justice system. Uh, then there is a judicial independence. So in a joint judicial system, a foundational principle is that unwear commitment to the judicial independence. Judges are mandated to uh, enable impartiality, ensure freedom for external affairs. There must not be any political pressure or any other side of pressure. So it must be an independent judiciary system, which is a core value for any judiciary. So enforcing our decisions. So now there comes also the joint uh, justice system is committed to enforce its uh, decisions through robust mechanism involving the execution of the court uh, orders, meticulous collection of fines, and effective realization of remedies. So these all together, they have to see how to enforce it in a different uh, nation, uh, which will be united in one judicial system. Second is cooperation and coordination. There is a very high need of these things that the cooperation and coordination must be between the nations. The involvement, tangible actions like information exchange, uh, mutual uh, recognition or uh, judgment and cooperative efforts to training and research. So they have to give cooperation in this also. Some nations have highly equipped with uh, so one kind of research and information when it will be sure they will it will benefit the ummah inshallah and then comes the overview of islamic governance and legal system so if you will see the first will be sharia governance so sharia governance is uh, ensures islamic finance and institutions adhere to principle through board of quality scholars scholars who are working rigorously on the Scrutinization of products, upholding their standards, ethics, to let it be uh, in line with the Sharia, even though sometimes some products have, or some contracts have little lacunas, but after all, a lot of nobody is perfect. After a lot of research, they come to know, they make that amendments. Uh, till now, Alhamdulillah, the Islamic financial system has reached to a good level. And second is the regulatory framework. If you will see the regulatory framework, this is also effective Islamic economic governance relies on the tailored regular framework addressing unique features like interest, prohibition and profit sharing, regulatory authorities formulate and enforce regulatory cover license, capital advocacy, risk management, disclosure, consumer protection. So these are the elements which the legal framework will handle in the joint governance and legal framework and fourth fourth is the this was the legal fourth is contractual framework so in contractual framework they have to meticulously made contracts which will be acceptable in all nations they have to work on it the contracts must be aligned with uh, 
legal and Sharia elements of all the nations which will be acceptable. So if we will come in the common goal, all nations, uh, Islamic nations will not have any uh, problem with the Sharia structured contracts such as Mudaraba, Musharaka, Ijar, all nations nowadays are accepting this in Islamic finance as well. So one more is dispute resolution mechanism. We have to have this dispute as I talked before in governance also. Uh, so legal framework also must have this dispute resolution. Consumer protection must be there. So the consumers must be protected. There must be a separate way to protect them. For example, regulatory framework which prioritize transparency, fair treatments, and robust dispute resolution mechanism. So this uh, kind of consumer protection will enhance the uh, treatment and readiness, uh, will enhance the confidence in the Islamic finance or Islamic governance in the joint system. Then supervision and monitoring, of course, after everything is done, we need to have a supervision and monitoring for all transactions. Uh, to inter with request resources and powers, these authority vigilantly access compliance with Sharia principles and regulations, ensuring sound and probatic in Islamic finance institutions for industrial resilience and credibility. So after everything is done, after these structures are made, finance is given, we need still to have supervision and monitoring that there is not any loophole or people are using it a way in which it must be. Then integration, uh, in, uh, international cooperation and harmonization. So, as a, as this uh, will be a union, will be of international cooperation, lot of nations together. So, global inter integration of Islamic economics, Islamic economic governance relies on international cooperation among regulatory authorities and standard setting bodies. So collaborative efforts promotes consistency standards and mutual recognition of Islamic finance practices, posting uh, credibility and facilitating cross-border transactions for global acceptance of Islamic financial principles. So this, when we have this kind of uh, cooperation and harmonization that we can have cross-border transactions which are acceptable, there is no dispute in this as per Islamic, uh, as per Sharia alliance, as we will see that, if we will see that Islamic finance is not only for Muslims, it is an ethical financing, if we will see in another way. So the ethical financing is not any problem for anyone. So it is for non-Muslims also. Now we will come to on challenges in the implementation of fair joint justice system and economic governance. So if we will see the first uh, the lack of universal acceptance interpretation of Islamic economic principle. So what are the challenges now here that, as we all know, that there are different, diverse interpretation of Islamic economic principles among scholars and judiciary jurisdictions may result in inconsistency. If you will see our Madhav, Hanfi, Shafi, Hanbali, they have some differences in interpretation of Islam, uh, economic or financial issues. So we have to streamline that. This will be one of the challenge to streamline and have this universally accepted to all Muslims in every mother hub. Second is the lack of adequate institutional and regulatory framework. If you will see at this time, we don't have uh, so much regulatory framework well versus except the uh, IFSB, which is Islam, uh, Islamic Financial Service Board. They guide, they are giving the guidelines for uh, implementation standards and strength to the financial ability of the Islamic finance. So we need to improve it more and give it more strength or have additional institutions which will give as a back to this institution. The lack of training professional trainers professionals in the field of Islamic economics. So there is still the lack of these professionals, even though there are universities who are teaching now Islamic economics, Islamic finance, uh, like in Qatar in the big example in Turkey, we started in Turkey also, Qatar, Malaysia, UK. So now it started and it is going now day by day, Alhamdulillah, it is expanding. So there are some institutions which are giving this and we need some corporate level also to give trainings and have more staff, more professional in this field so that it will be done in ethical way. 
the lack of awareness and education saying that the corporate trainings as well as the trainings for our uh, clients or customers whoever are or any stake stakeholder so we need to distribute training or we need to give training or awareness programs to give awareness about the islamic uh, system islamic economic system and the inherent diversity in socio economic and political as we will see in the unions we have different nations different nation have diversity in economical uh, these theories are economical setup and political setup so we need this diversity to have a one single acceptable uh, some sort of thing so this will be one more hurdle in this the resistance from the conventional economic institution this is the last point for this challenge is that conventional economic economic institutions will resist for this as much they can because it is a big part of their uh, business which is going towards the islamic economics and islamic finance and the big whole part of big part of the world which will come under islamic finance they will try to resist it so that to save their market share now this will be also in global challenge is what will be challenge in global integration this we were talking about the islamic nation if we will integrate in it globally there are three basic three main challenges which will be that is prohibition of interest because many countries they don't bother about this which are non muslim countries so they there will be this challenge because they only like to have to grow their wealth they don't uh, bother about it is interest or it is not interest whatever it will be so this will be challenge from non muslim countries and the principle of risk sharing that most of the financial conventional finance nowadays are not uh, ready to share the risk in a state they want to earn anyway but they transfer the risk in a stuff sharing the risk so they believe in transferring risk and be safe rather than sharing the risk so this will be one more challenge in global integration the principle of social jest nowadays uh, the social jest remain as uh, just a talk if you will say the global economic system is often criticized for promoting inequality and exploitation therefore implementing islamic economic governance is a way that uphold social jest can be challenged in the context of global integrity because they talk about social jest but they don't work on this in financial way or in economical way now the last part is the opportunities for the islamic union in implementing a joint justice system and economic governance if we will see the opportunities we will harmonize up the standards the all standards which are having diversity we can have a smooth and harmonized standards for all the countries of the islamic union so that there will be a very smooth running of business or transactions whatever will be and hence marketing integration so the islamic countries have a big part in the world so if we will integrate our market it will enhance uh, the economy of these countries they will be not dependent on others so much because there will be a free trade system free transaction system whatever will be in uh, regarding this economic system because it will be controlled as a whole one unit and third is collaboration and cooperation in research and development so these all countries will collaborate and make a, uh, collaborate in research and development where there is one by one individually putting their efforts when it will be a collective effort it will be very successful and have great achievements we hope so inshallah uh, human capital development so by these trainings and by sharing the information we can have our human capital development also some countries who which don't have the high standards of education we can share the education system together it will be as a whole one union which will aspire to have some level of education şöyle iki dakikada toparlayabiliriz uh, sir excuse me you are requested to wrap in 2 minutes on dakika it will finish inshallah sorry uh, iki dakika <laughs> not yeah. joint uh, investment project so if we will have the investment project jointly we don't need to bo- uh, be dependent on international financial institutions such as world bank or IMF to have a funding and then control our all systems have some 
uh, restrictions in our economy. So when we will be together, we don't have to bother. So the giant investment projects will be a big leap in uh, this union. Uh, advocacy and representation. So we will have a big uh, value of representation as a whole. We will represent one. Uh, so this will give us strongest for as a in the, in the world as a part of representation, strengthening the evet. union and solidarity. Uh, şöyle son bir iki cümle. So şimdi... just last sentence please. Uh, last one. Promoting economic development and social justice. It is self-explanatory. And then if we will see economic stability and uh, uh, resilience, we will see risk sharing and profit sharing. It will be resilient in the economy, stable in finance transactions, prudent and risk management, emphasize our real economic activities, ethical and responsible investment, safe, steady nets. If these points are giving the resilience to the economy, as we discussed above also this, and leverage to the vast resource, uh, natural resource as a whole, this big part of world, we will have natural resources which we can share together, geographical divid dividend, and the strong tradition and trade and commerce, we will have a big trade routes, commerce, and we will have a big open market for each other, emphasize on real uh, economic activities, significant mm. potential for socio-economical development. So by integrating these all things, we can have a Uh, viable uh, Islamic union which will have the uh, economy and justice together as a union. Thank you and thanks for patience.